Welcome to Take Two Radio. We are pleased to bring you interviews with people in the entertainment and music industry, discussions and recaps of the four remaining daytime soaps, that's The Bold and the Beautiful, The Young and the Restless, General Hospital, and Days of Our Lives, as well as various other shows. For upcoming and previous shows, check Take2Radio.com, that's with the number two, And you can find us on Blog Talk Radio, iHeartRadio, iTunes, and other streaming apps. Follow us on social media at Take2Radio, and thanks for listening. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Take2Radio. I'm Pam, your host, and joining me today is the lovely Candace. Hello, Candace. Hello, everybody. Hello, Pam. How you doing tonight? Um, you know, it's Monday, so my body and my mind it has to be prepared for this week after enjoying some days off and the weekend. Uh, oh boy. Yeah, time to get back into the old swing of things and it's not always easy when you're coming back from both <laughs> vacation and a weekend. <laughs> exactly. It's like it's like really like I guess the only thing I can think of is that next week is Thanksgiving, so yeah. we get a break from that, So, but it's still stressful. Right, and not long after that, you have Christmas vacation, I'm sure, right? Pretty much, but it seems so far away. I know, but it really isn't. <laughs> and And Christmas brings us to the topic of tonight's guest. Uh, tonight, we are very pleased to have with us an award act, award-winning producer, director, writer, Michael Caruso, and a little bit later, an award-winning actor, producer, Kyle Lauder, to discuss their upcoming holiday movie, A Mermaid for Christmas, which debuts on Amazon Prime on November 26th. And I think we have Michael with us. Hi, Hello. How are you? How you doing? Do I sound like Wendy Williams there? (laughs) (laughs) Kyle's literally, I'm in my bedroom right now. Kyle's in my kitchen and he's calling in 10 minutes. Oh, (laughs) well, tell him he's got to wait his turn. Sorry, you come first. (laughs) He will. He's he's good. He's all good. (laughs) And you're in your bedroom. Guess where I am? I'm in my bedroom. You know, you might as well make it comfy and cozy, right? You know, right? You know <laughs> what? I'm about to go. I'm about to go in my bedroom too, since everybody's doing this. Like, <laughs> it's a slumber party. Right. There you right. go. Uh, yeah. All we need to do is put our jammies on, and and we'll be all set after the show. We just just hop right in our beds. That sounds delightful, <laughs> actually. <laughs> well. You know, you've been on our show a few times, and I don't think I've ever asked I you. It's been a minute, hasn't it? It's been, it's been a yeah, while. Yeah, it has. I, I, I don't remember the last time I was. I mean, I know I've done it a bunch of times, but I don't remember the last time. It's 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 been I a minute. It's been a minute. Yeah, yeah. Well, you're always so busy creating all these wonderful things that you do. Um, so it it had to be, you know, one or another or. <laughs> You know, who knows? <laughs> but we're just happy that you're back again. And I'm um thrilled and grateful to be invited. Thank you for having me. Oh, you're so very welcome. Thank you. Now I'm going to ask you a question that I'm not sure I ever asked you before. And if I did, okay. pardon me. But then again no, it's, it's good, good to ask then it's good to ask again because we may have new listeners. Who knows? Um How did you get started in the entertainment business? I mean, was there an inspiration or did you wake up one day and say, I want to get into this crazy business? Um, So let's see. Uh, A thousand years ago, I was a (laughs) professor at Syracuse University. Um, And I, you know, I wanted to be an actor. And so I graduated from college and then I lived in New York City, acting in New York City for many years. And then I, my wife and I came out to Los Angeles and, you know, I would say about seven years ago, let's just use the round, we'll use the number seven. Um, you know, I, I finally decided that, you know, because there was a, there was a big writer's strike here and there was some, you know, funky stuff in LA happening. And 
I just wasn't auditioning for the parts that I was interested in. And so I realized that if I wanted to do work, I had to create it. And that's how Divanity was born. And, um, and that's when Kyle Louder and I reconnected um, after years because we went to college together. And, um, you know, I think as the years have gone by, I just I fell out of love with acting and I found a love and a passion for writing and subsequently producing. And so I just, you know, it was kind of like one of those gear shifts in life that I really wasn't expecting. I, I'm clinically insane for wanting to be a producer, for the record. Yeah. Like, it, it's, I, I don't know. I don't know what kind of psychomasochist I am to want to do this, but I do because I keep doing it. Um, but it's just, you know, I think sometimes in life, you know, the universe presents you with the ability to just explore a different aspect of your creativity or your talent that you maybe weren't counting on or thinking that you even had in the first place, but it just resonates in a very different way. So, so yeah, so, I mean, so like I, that's a very long winded answer to your question. I, I don't really know at what moment in my life I was like, I want to turn my life into total chaos every moment of every day mm -hmm. but that's what happens when you're in the entertainment industry it's very rewarding. exactly <laughs> yep. well and I think that could be said about many of us when we're starting out in to you know even people in college they're going to college for one type of degree but then yet they're like do I really want to do that you know, and then they try out the job they got their degree for, and then eventually they're like, eh, nope, sorry, waste of money, got to do something else, <laughs> you know. The entertainment <laughs> just industry try is the thing because you, you don't, you know, it's it's not like you, you don't, like, report to the same place every day. So right. it's, it's, it's always in a constant state of fluctuation. So, I mean, you know, there's there's really little stability to be had, even, even by, you know, when you're a producer or whatnot, but – you know, I think that we all have to just kind of find what we love and move towards it as much as we possibly can. Exactly. Exactly. Just got to do the best. And as long as you're happy, that's all that matters. Well, that and making money, too. I am too, happy. So. I am happy. I'm tired, but I'm happy. That's why I'm doing the interview in the bedroom. <laughs> Well, we are so extremely excited to see your newest project, a holiday movie called A Mermaid for Christmas. And as I mentioned, it debuts on Amazon Prime November 26th. Now, would you share yes. with us what the movie is about without giving too much away? Because, of course, we want people to watch it. And who is in it? Okay, so who is in it? So to all of your lovely listeners, um, if you guys are soap fans, we've got, of course, the wonderful Kyle Lauder is starring as Travis Hunter in our movie. We have Ariane Zucker. Um, we have Kathleen Gatti. Ari, Ari obviously is on Days of Our Lives. Kathleen Gatti from uh, Joe's Hospital. We have Cherie J. Wilson makes a lovely cameo at the beginning of the movie. Um, she was obviously Dallas. Um, we've got Ian Buchanan, we've got Nadia Bjorlin, we've got, we've got some fresh new faces too, some really, really talented up and coming actors that, um, that joined us. So basically a mermaid for Christmas is very different from what I've ever done in the past. Cause it's a nice movie and there's no F bombs and everybody's sweet and lovely. And, um, and basically it's, it's about, you know, Travis Hunter, uh, played by Kyle and he's, having some financial difficulties in his life. And uh, the mayor of uh, this town, Coco Bay, where they all live, played by Ari Zucker, she's a very wealthy uh, real estate developer, and she's buying up the town. And uh, Travis owns a bar called the Coral Cantina, and he's trying to save it from being taken over. And all of a sudden, it shows up in Coco Bay and causes a lot of chaos. And that's as far as I'm going to go. There you go. And definitely tell people where to see the trailer oh God, because I never I laughed sorry, so I hard. Like, I completely forgot. What? I'm sorry you didn't. I sorry, didn't hear you. When did you forget, you, Michael? I apologize. <laughs> what, Candace? 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 Uh oh. Uh oh. Are you there? Candace. Did his call fall? Did his call drop? Michael? Hello. Hey, Michael. 
Yeah. Yeah, there Michael's here. We we couldn't hear you, Candace. Oh. <laughs> that was fun. Well, that you know why I'm making popcorn now because everybody was getting what? comfortable in the bed and pajamas and you know. <laughs> I didn't know. Dead air it time happens. because of popcorn. Yeah. I'm telling oh, you that that is one of my biggest, biggest pet peeves is dead air time. <laughs> I, they all know it. All my co-hosts know it. <laughs> but it, it happens. <laughs> it happens. It's live. It happens. It's live, It's folks. for a worthy cause. It's, it's, it's for popcorn. I think that's worth it. <laughs> yeah. You know, getting ready to watch Ladies of the Lake. See? Oh, oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. Continuing on, now this is not the first project for you as we've all watched and loved, as you said, The Vanity, Winter Thorn, Ladies of the Lake, Oh My God, One and Two. What was different for you when producing and writing Mermaid, if anything, other than the non-swearing part? (laughs) (laughs) I love to to, uh, constantly challenge myself. And I've been doing extensive you know soap work for you know the last seven years and I just I really I've never done anything that a family can sit down and watch together and that that was something that I really wanted to explore though I I think that we need we need all types of programming right and you know it's it's just I I really wanted to do something that you know if my grandmother was alive I could have sat down and, and watched with her she would have loved all the soap stuff anyway but you know it's just it's just kind of nice to be able to say okay I know that I've done this and I know that I'm I'm I've been relatively successful at one thing why not try something different and that's kind of how I mean I came up with this idea years ago I've I've always wanted to do a christmas movie because I love christmas movies and so the timing just felt right it just felt right to to do something totally different and um and in that aspect, this was a really fun project because it was just, it was, you know, it's, it's different. There's, there's no cliffhangers. There's no, you know, it's, you know, soaps are fantastic and they're a lot of fun to make, but it's, it's nice to do some comedy for a change. I've never done a comedy before. So we did a lot of, you know, zany, goofy, you know, the audience is going to love seeing the soap stars being so funny. Ariane Zucker is the funniest human being on the planet. Like no joke. She's hilarious, and Kyle is really funny in the movie. Like Kyle's never played a character like this before, and I I loved I love being able to take these these talented performers that, that I've, I've become such good friends with, and they're really family at this point, and just being able to to write something for them that that pushes them in a different direction, so the audience can can see them as not just one type of performer, and that's that's very very rewarding. Good answer. Good answer, Michael. Now, thank you. I'm hi, you Michael. Candace. Well, you know, it's it's not about me. It's about you. This is about oh, you and Kyle yeah. tonight. Okay. They, what, see, I'm being her? professional. <laughs> <laughs> see, <laughs> this is this is the kind of entertainment that I was expecting from Michael tonight for this interview. Like, I don't know. Just he's just he's just great. He's a great guy, you guys. So you're so right. sweet. You've been so good be... to me over the years, and I appreciate it. Not a problem. So my question is, did you go into this project with the same mindset as you normally would with the other projects you have done, or were you nervous since this is a, a movie? I mean, this is big time. I'm always nervous. I always. I mean, you literally you got. My wife on one side of me and Kyle on the other side of me trying to keep me from, like, jumping out a window most days. I mean, it's – it's. Uh, I think that you need to have nerves. I think that when you reach a place where you, you know, you feel like you've got it all figured out, I don't mm-hmm. think that's cool. You know, you, you always want to be motivated to do the very, very best and not rest on your laurels and, and always – you know, each each project is, is a new relationship with a new audience. And even when people – you know, you don't want to take for granted the people that have been following you for years, and you also want to introduce yourself to a whole new set of people. So it's, um, I guess my mindset going in is just like, I wasn't intimidated by the fact that it was a movie, because really production's production. I mean, it doesn't, right. the dynamics change, but um, it really it was it was trying to craft something that was authentic Um and something that really resonates with, with viewers, you know, this is, 
it's a funny, goofy movie, but it's also very intimate, and there's a lot of really lovely, tender moments in it. Sorry, my nose is all stuffy because the weather keeps changing here in LA. I apologize. And uh, and so it's just it's just you know you just gotta put your head down and get to work. I mean that's pretty much what you do. You just you have your checklist and you don't stop until the whole thing's done. Right. And don't worry because the weather has changed on the East Coast and some people are getting sick too. Oh my God! It's hot. <clears> it's, <throat> cold. it's hot. It's cold. It's cold. Ninety degrees in LA today. It's almost Thanksgiving. Like you could cook a okay. turkey outside. <sighs> You didn't have to tell us how the temperature, Michael. Now, now it's like it's like what thirty, like forty-five degrees here, and you're oh, talking about we'll ninety. We'll oh, I'm so jealous. Heartbeat. All right, see, and I'm jealous of you. So let's both be jealous of each other. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> now, one of the things about this movie is, like you said, it has a who's who from the soap world that the fans really love and enjoy. So when you mm-hmm. were envisioning this project, how did you choose the cast? Like, did you already know who's going to play which character, or you just was like, roll the dice? Uh, you know, it's weird. Over the years, our company has kind of developed this <clears throat> unofficial performer's troupe. I mean, I use a lot of the same people in my stuff because, you know, when you, when you – have great actors that are a joy to work with and a pleasure to be around, and they, they always deliver. You want to work with those people over and over again. So I would say that for my first movie, um, I really wanted to work with people that I trusted, that, that mm-hmm. you know, I wasn't going to have to come to set every day and worry about uh, you know, what's going to happen with this person. So I pretty much worked with everybody, or at least knew everybody who's done the movie. Um, but just, you know... Kathleen and Ari and obviously Kyle's my best friend. I mean, all of these people, Jessica, I worked with Jessica for a million years. Like, you know, we're very close with each other. Um, and we don't see each other every day, but we, you know, we have kind of like this unofficial family thing going on. So I, I pretty much wrote everything for everybody that's in the movie. There, was, there wasn't a lot of random guest work as far as who we were going to cast. Okay. Okay. Now, mm-hmm. your wife, the lovely, amazing Barbie. Hi, Barbie. In case you're listening. She is. Um, she, and is you... she is. She is. <laughs> Hi, Barbie. Hi, like Barbie. This is a family reunion. <laughs> 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 Gotta give love to everybody here. Now, you guys have worked on multiple projects. With uh-huh. you guys being husband and wife, do you feel like you can read what each other you which each other you want done during the making of the project? Do you have are you guys in sync? Like Barbie is one of the most organized people I've ever met in my life. Like the woman, she should have her own show on HGTV. Like she, she just, she, I, like I can't even describe it. Like on set, she does things and we don't even have to like think twice about it. She just, oh, oh, you're on. Okay, um, she's just she's incredibly efficient and so like i wouldn't say that we have a psychic connection when we're on set because there are things that we have to remind each other of but um she has her task list and i have mine and we just kind of like you know kind of we're like planets in a solar system kind of circling each other when we're working together we've got a wonderful i'm really lucky i love working with my wife she's super chill she's super cool everybody loves her um, and I'm very fortunate because not everybody can work with their spouse, and we just we really enjoy. She wants to kill me half the time. I mean, like you know, she'll yeah. give me these death stares. Like Michael, <laughs> open your mouth one more time and see what's going to happen. I make her crazy, <laughs> but she loves me. She puts up with me, so I, you know, it all comes out in the wash. <laughs> you could feel the love though that you guys have. I mean, that's just amazing and. I'm so happy years. that you can work Jean well together. I was 25 when I met my wife. Aw, Aww. that's so sweet. Aww. That's so yeah. sweet. <laughs> <laughs> You're so funny. Well, I am one person that loves rom-coms. And, I mean, that's my go-to thing and comedy, you know, sitcoms and stuff like that. So um, I'm I'm thoroughly loving everything about this movie so far that I've seen in the trailer and that. Thank but you. where you're welcome. Where did the idea come from to have a mermaid in it? I mean, I love it. It's so different. It, and that, you just said it. It's different. I didn't want to make the same Christmas movie that everybody has seen a million times. Like not knocking anybody but like 
want to do another version of it for Christmas Carol, but you know, it's set in a different location or whatever. I, I just, I love fantasy movies. I grew up in the eighties. I love, you know, like the never ending story and the dark crystal and all that stuff. And I just, I'm really, you know, I lived in Florida for a while and everybody loves mermaids in Florida. And I was like, well, what if we put a mermaid and set it at Christmas time? And it's just, it's, it's literally as simple yet as random as that. Um, because really the holidays are about love and emotion and family. And this is, this is a family story and it's about, you know, a group of, you know, it's a family and friends that are really coming together to work through some stuff. And the mermaid is kind of the vehicle for that. So yes, we have the mermaid in the movie, and all that fun stuff, but it's, it's really a, it's a movie about people working together to accomplish things. And that's really the heart of the movie. And that's what you want the audience to take away from it. So that's that's wonderful. I want the audience to have a good time. I mean, that's always mm-hmm. true. I always want the audience to have a good time. I want to not take myself so seriously. Just you know, just you know, it's 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 obviously it's it's an imaginary story. You know, you know, check logic at the door and just have fun with it. Super goofy, physical slapstick comedy, and you know, it just it's it's just it's a fun little romp. It's really I'm very proud of it. It's very cute. It's not perfect, but I love it. Yeah, and in this crazy world that we live in, we have to take a break from reality and check into those types of movies. So this will be perfect. And, of course, now Christmas is right around the corner. So, you know, that's a double yay. Uh-huh. <laughs> now, I believe this is your first time uh, directing, or correct me yes. if I'm wrong. Okay. It so is. what was, was your – was my first time. Okay, so what was your experience like wearing multiple hats, so to speak? Our company hired a brand new director of photography, and the director of photography is the guy that that he he basically shoots the movie. Right? So the director tells everybody what to do and how he wants it to look or whatnot. But the DP is a very very important job, and we brought in a new guy named Adam Fearman. Um, and honestly, it he's. So when you see the movie, he's so talented, so incredibly talented, and he's the nicest guy. And for my first movie, I have to say, like, he was absolutely integral to the success of this. I mean, he he really worked with the crew, communicated everything, and he just he had a ton of really great ideas. I predominantly worked with the cast. We we did a lot of prep work in advance. We knew what shots we wanted. We knew the look of the movie. We did a lot of work in advance. So when we got to set, he kind of did his thing with the crew and I did mine and then we worked together. But um, it was, it was very much uh, a partnership in that regard. So, cause you are wearing a lot of hats because not only am I, mm-hmm. director, but I'm still producing and I'm still mm-hmm. the location manager and I'm still like about 20 other different jobs. So um, I was very fortunate that we had probably the best crew that I've ever worked with. And that, you know, I've I've worked with some extraordinary people over the years that I'm so grateful to have worked with. Um, but this 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 crew, it was just a pleasure to come to set every day. They were so nice, and so excited, and just really, really, really talented people. And I love working with talented people. Well, if you don't have a number one production crew and amazing actors. You're not going to get what you were looking for when you were making a movie no. or anything else. So, you know, you got to have it. Those are both number ones, and there's no way around it. Otherwise, your movie will be a big number two, and we don't want that. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. No, we don't. <laughs> and nope. now Michael <laughs> we're gonna let you breathe for a second because now Kyle is gonna Bring get grilled <laughs> Kyle is gonna get grilled and filleted by Candace. So here we go. <laughs> grilled and filleted? <laughs> like, I am wow. so excited about that. <laughs> oh, well well now. There you go. Okay. <laughs> grilled. I have not been grilled and filleted in a very long time. So. Now I really want some. See, I am getting hungry by this conversation, and it's not good for me at all right now. But okay. So, hi, Kyle. All right. Hello. <laughs> so, Kyle. we asked Michael Earp. Oh, go ahead, Sam. 
Oh, I was just going to ask real quick. Um, Kyle, are you in your jammies too, or no? <laughs> we might as well be a pajama party. No, I actually don't. I actually don't own jammies. For I have oh, like comfy clothes, go. like sweats and stuff. But no, I'm not. Okay. I mean, it's 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 early. It's early on the on the West Coast, so. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm known yeah. to go to bed early, but this is like a little early even for me yeah. at this point. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So, so Kyle, we asked Michael earlier uh, this question, and for our new listeners who may not know, how did you get started in this business called show? Oh, God. How much time do you have? <laughs> we have time. We have time. Yeah, I just... Oh uh, God. Okay. This is a short, short version. I, I, I was lucky enough to grow up, um, in just North of Manhattan, about a half an hour North of Manhattan. Uh, so I, I grew up so close to New York city and the bright lights of, you know, everything that city has to offer and the culture and the arts and everything. And my parents were always so good about bringing my, my brothers and I down there, um, to get immersed in that culture. And then, you know, I fell in love with, um, Broadway and stage work. And then when I got old enough in high school, I used to, I was a lifeguard during the summers and I would take my lifeguard money and jump on the train and take the train to New York city. And I would probably go, God, I mean, multiple times per week, you know, every week during the summer. And I go to the TKTS, the half price, you know, discount ticket booth in, in Times Square and get a ticket to a Broadway show. And just, and I, I guess I'd go by myself or I'd invite anybody who want to go with me. But that's where I just really fell in love with, you know, acting and, and entertainment. And I just was, that's when I was like, this is what I want to do. Because um, I went to Syracuse University, uh, the drama department where Michael and I met a thousand years ago. Um, and uh, 900 years ago. Not that <laughs> <laughs> but um, I was only there for about a year and a half. Like I left after the first semester of my sophomore year. I just, again, this is, this is probably a story for another time, but, but I just, I went to a showcase in Los Angeles that I had heard about over the summer, the previous summer um, where I could just kind of do my thing, show my talents, I guess, for lack of a better phrase, in front of agents and managers and casting directors. And I got, you know, a very, I was very humbled by the response that I got. And um, I went back to school that first semester and I was like, you know, I just, I kind of felt that the pull of saying, you know, I'm, when I go there, it's not like I'll be going there blind. I have some contacts of you know, representation that was interested in me. So I said, you know what? talk to my folks about it they were as supportive as any parents could be in fact i respect them for the fact being a parent myself now i, I have a perspective on this they they said look you're never going to be homeless but our deal was you know we will pay for college and and you know some spending money while you're there and but if you do this and go to LA, you're on your own dime and it, you know and, and i respected that and I think it, it's what drove me to say you know there's no safety net here i, I don't want to go back to school you know with crawling back with my tail between my legs, like, you know, mm-hmm. having failed, I guess. So, um, right. you know, I, I was very, I was very grateful to kind of get to work right away. Um, in terms, I mean, I got a, mod- <laughs> sorry, I can't say this with a straight face. I got a modeling agent. I started <laughs> modeling and made some money doing that. Um, oh, I, mean, I, I was like, I, I well, they asked, <laughs> um, <laughs> But, uh, yeah, and I, I got some, some pretty big campaigns that were, you know, gave me some confidence to say, you know what, I, I think I can stay here and do this. And, um, but I didn't even have an acting agent yet. I only had a modeling agent. Because I, I came out during what's called pilot season. I didn't know this at the time. But it's when nobody's looking for new clients at that point because they're trying to get work for the ones they have. So I, you know, I, I didn't have any acting representation when I first got here. So, but I was working – um, you know, as a model and, and paying my bills and, and saying, okay, you know, I don't have to go home yet. And divine intervention. Um, again, this is a long story for another day as well, but I was able to get an audition for days of our lives, about six months into me getting to LA. And it was actually my first professional audition ever. And I, 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 I've said this before. I think it actually worked in my favor because I was like, there's no way I'm getting this. I mean, I'll just make this a learning experience. You know, I'll just go in and do my best and I'll learn the process. And 
and I just I, I felt I didn't have anything to lose, and I just kind of felt free with it. Um, and I, again, I think that worked in my favor because I I you know a few auditions later and a couple screen tests later, I I signed a three year contract with Days and was like, how the heck did I finagle myself onto this show? <laughs> um, and yeah, I was I was nineteen at the time, and uh, that was. 20 years ago so yeah the rest is history well to hmm. tell you the truth i didn't even know that that was your first professional acting job so that yeah. is pretty amazing i mean to it's amazing and scary i would imagine at the same time oh i don't yeah i mean i was i was a deer in the headlights for so long i mean it's it's you just i mean it's soap opera is and I can say this now, I've been in that particular genre for almost 20 years. It's one of the harder genres in entertainment, you know, and, and I was just, it was baptism by fire, you know, with the amount of dialogue I had to learn and, and the, 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 the pace that they, that they filmed. Um, I think I was, I lucked out in that sense because I didn't have a, any other perspective. You know, it's like I, I started that way. And then when I would do anything else, I was like, wow, it's a lot less stressful, you know, like doing, you know, primetime television or, or, or film work is um, it, it's, it's a little bit of a slower pace. Um, you get more takes and things, you know, it, so yeah, I, I think that it worked, worked out for me in the sense that I just learned um, in, in about of a, a stressful pressure cooker environment as you could learn it, and, you know, but mm-hmm. I, I would say I also, I also had the, the blessing of, of being, you know, working with the the legends like Deidre Hall and Drake Hogeson when I got there, yeah. you know, like I was with John and Marlena. So they, you know, took, if you're going to learn, then learn from the best, you know, or like two of the best. Right. So that, that's exactly, I was very lucky about that. Um, just, you know, how to hit your mark and find your light and memorize the, that dialogue and kind of, you know, and then how to deal with, with the media and the press and, and all of a sudden this, kind of this relative fame that started to come in and and that was a little overwhelming and yeah so it, it was um but I didn't have any time to be complacent about it because you know I was very lucky that Tom Lang was the head writer at the time and he just he loved my particular character Brady at the time and he just he had me working so much that I it was just kind of a I think the first year was kind of a blur um now that I look back on it but yeah it was it was the first uh the first gig I ever had. Hmm. Interesting. I didn't even know that either. So learn something today. There you Fun go. Fun facts. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> now, A Mermaid for Christmas does come out until November 26th on Amazon Prime, and we would like to tell our listeners, after seeing the movie, make sure you write a review so they yes, know to make us very, feel. Thank you for saying that, Candace. I was, yeah, yeah you're it's very it's it's very important. You know, people you know people who listen to podcasts hear the same thing. It's like they, it, it, reviews are very important to the life of you know of a project, and uh, we we greatly we, we we greatly appreciate it. You know, watch the movie, let us know what you think. Hopefully, you'll like it and leave you know five stars and rave about it. I mean, in a perfect world. Of course, but we yeah, will. It, 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 yeah. But it's very it's very important. Um, you know, for for any artist out there, um, with their yeah. projects. Uh, to to get reviewed because it you know it, it shuffles traffic you know to that particular project so yeah it would mean a lot to us if the uh, if the fans could um, could do that for us. Uh, don't I do worry, I got, I got really a couple people. I, what? I do ahead, want to Mike. jump in really quickly if I may, and just just to kind of clarify something, you do not have to be an Amazon Prime member in order to watch the movie. Mm-hmm. It's really weird because they they call it Prime Video. Um, which is a little misleading because everybody thinks, oh, I don't have Amazon Prime. If you just have an Amazon account, you can rent or purchase the movie. So it's mm-hmm. not it's not streaming on Amazon Prime. So if, if you don't have Amazon, it's not, not like it, it's, it's not like Netflix where you have to be like or Hulu where you have to be a subscribing member. You can literally go to Amazon dot com and search the movie and buy or rent it. You do not have to be a, a paying subscriber to Amazon to watch it correct right and also or, it doesn't cost that much either they're you know to rent or or buy no the, no uh, it's not and, and that's the thing it's like it, it, it's it's easy i mean you can go to amazon.com and buy you know a mermaid for christmas and roll of paper towels it's like it's the same thing mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> but it's 
also, or tissue. But also we, one or quick tissue, because you might need that. Yeah, tissues for when you cry. Yeah. There you go. WFL Productions, <laughs> too, is, our, is the primary investor of the movie. Um, they were really great. And we, Kyle and I came to them because the movie is being shopped right now. It was just sitting with them. It's going to Cannes and Berlin and all these places um, for international release. Uh, but we really wanted to get it out this year. So um, it's priced very affordably. If you want to buy the movie, it's nine ninety nine, And if you want to rent it, I think it's like four ninety nine. So not, not, not like, you know, we're not charging 20 bucks for it or anything like that. So it's very affordable. And there you have it. Yeah. I will even do one even better. If you're not a member, you still can sign up for the seven day free trial and you still can watch the movie. <clears throat> We're free, and then if you like it, you can become a member. See, look, it, well, both, it so works out both ways. No, that's, 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 that's actually not the case on Amazon. It's only really. Purchase. It's only for yeah. Huh. Yeah. Okay, well, I guess it was just some some of us. <laughs> anyway, moving on. <laughs> I don't want to get anybody in trouble, <laughs> but <laughs> but here's now my question for you, Kyle, is for somebody who's breaking into the business and would like to know the daily routine, like the you know. The, the day of the life of an actor. Can you tell us what it was like to film the movie? Like what all took place? How did you put up with Michael? That wasn't actually a part of the question. I just threw it in there. Um, well, I wouldn't wish just, that upon any human being. On the face of <laughs> oh, you're in so don't, much trouble. Don't forget, Michael's still yeah. listening. Oh, oh he's I'm still sorry. there. Hey, man. Um, oh, man. <laughs> it's it's uh they're they're very long days um that you know early mornings and um it's about it's a great question because you know this I could there's so much that I could say about this but to, to try to you know kind of siphon it down it, it's from an acting standpoint it's all about you know your connection to the material right because if if you don't believe what you're doing and you're not comfortable with your with your material meaning your lines and and you know, the kind of performance that you want to deliver and everything. If you don't believe it, if you're not into it, then the audience is not going to connect to it. So the, the most important thing for me, because I guess that's all I can really speak for is, is I just, I wake up in the morning and immediately try to get connected to the material that I have to do that day. Um, mm -hmm. And that's, you know, that is taking care of your mind, your body and your soul to kind of get, you know, you don't, what I'm saying is don't like, sleep you know miss your alarm and then get in rush hour traffic and be flipping people off and like you know not have coffee or breakfast or you know and then get to set and you're frazzled and you're hungry and you're pissed off from the guy that cut you off if this may you know what I'm, i mean by this it's like you just i just make sure that i'm i'm up early and mind body and soul is all centered and i'm feeling good and i'm connected to the material and then again early morning and then um I, I, in particular, I'm, I'm not saying I'm like unapproachable, but I'm also very just focused when I'm on set. You know, my conversations with, you know, the director, which is obviously Michael Caruso in this case, and and you know anybody else who's kind of creatively involved in in the project. Um, I always make sure, whether it was Mermaid for Christmas or any project that I've ever been on, I'm always in. Uh, major communication with the powers that be in terms of, you know, I, I have a vision for the character and, and, you know, what I think that he should be doing in any given project, but that also, you know, the, the director, the producers, everybody also has their vision and it's about finding that common vision that everybody can be happy with. So I'm in constant communication about that as well. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, then they're usually, especially on film, you know, that they can be very long days. Um, so you just make sure you kind of, again, take care of your mind, body, and soul throughout the day as well. Um, and then I always finish with a martini afterwards and then mm -hmm. early to bed. <laughs> <laughs> I guess what I'm saying ultimately to answer your question is just, you know, I would recommend to anybody that this is, um, to take care I, 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 it's the third and last time I say it, I'll promise, but it's just take care of your mind, your body and your soul and connect to the material and just make sure you stay focused all day long because at the end of the day, you know, this is going out to millions of people. And, you know, the last thing you want is, you know, a, an unfocused performance that, that nobody's really connecting to because that'll probably, probably be your last project. If that's the case. So, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Now, now, <laughs> Kyle, since you bring up the body part, I've got to ask you this. On your Instagram. Don't go there. <laughs> oh, no, I, 
you were with Jessica working out to get her in mermaid shape. So it's not really yeah, about you, but it is about you. Now, what exactly is that since she's already in phenomenal shape? Well, I just even mm-hmm. said the film. It's not like we had to work very hard, but it's just, you know, the, the, we wanted to make sure that she had, you know, that the, kind of a swimmer's body, if that makes any sense. And again, she, she was already has a, a wonderful, she's in shape is what I'm trying to say. Mm-hmm. But it's the other mm-hmm. thing too, is, is just the, the aspect of, you know, that tail when it's out of the water is heavy. And, you know, Jessica is, is 50 pounds soaking wet, you know, she's, right. a, she's a right. tiny little, <laughs> tiny little, I, I think the tail weighs almost as much as she does. Right. So it was, it was, yeah. It was a, 25 pounds out of water. There's a, um, wow. So, so the thing is, is it was a, it was obviously getting her her physical aesthetics right, which to your point again was not a problem, but it was more just about the functionality of being able to maneuver that tail both in and out of the water because you know it's supposed to be you know she's a mermaid it's attached to her you know in mm-hmm. fantasy so you know she had to look like she you know the tail belonged on her and not you know cumbersome and all that kind of stuff so yeah we just made sure that. Um, that she was up to it. And as, as you saw, she was, it was not, a, it was never a concern. It was just more kind of like, let's just, you know, make sure we cross the T's and dot the I's. Yeah. And now she has um, Arnold Schwarzenegger legs and abdomen, right? <laughs> no, I'm yeah, kidding. No. <laughs> 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 that wasn't exactly the look that we were going for. But yeah. <laughs> Well, after carrying the tail around, I mean, that's got to be, I mean, I've heard that before about them being heavy, so I can well imagine oh. how how tiring yeah. it is, too, at the end of the oh, day. Yeah. Oh, God, yeah. She, it, and it's not the most comfortable thing, either, so she was a trooper with that. Yeah, well, tell her thank you. We appreciate her effort and her hard work, um, because we know that we're going to love seeing this. Now, does your character sing by any chance in the movie? Because the Little Mermaid song comes to mind. <laughs> uh-huh. No, not not one of those. Not one of those movies. Okay. <laughs> Definitely not. That well, would just that would just that would just ruin a beautiful story. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, we know all. We all know that you can sing, so it wouldn't have. But um, that was you. only a, that was only a kidding question. No, of course um, I know. <laughs> my real question is: it's a little off subject, but I noticed that you have some upcoming projects, and uh, I, I was wondering wondering if you could tell us anything about any of them yet. I don't. I'm thinking out loud. Um, I don't. No, I probably can. They're up on. I'll tell you what. They're up on IMDb right now, but right. I don't know if they've been. I don't know if they've been officially announced yet. So okay. I don't want to get a phone call from mm-hmm. you know people saying um, why did you spill the beans. But again, they're they're up on IMDb. You can go check them out. Um, I can I can describe them. You know, one of them. I'm very very grateful for these these two films. Well, I have three films coming out in addition to Mermaid. I, I have a did a really cool motorcycle gang movie that's coming out this holiday season. Uh, first of all, that's called Nation's Fire. I can't talk about that. that that's coming okay. out. Uh, like in, okay. uh, I'll, I'll be posting this stuff on my social media feed. But So that comes out like over the holidays-ish. Um, and then next year, I'll have two films. One is a, a really cool horror movie where I play a vampire, which is um, um, like, a, like a multi- yeah, like a multi-picture type situation, which is really, really great. Um, yeah, it's, a, it's a, basically I'm stuttering because I'm trying to figure out the best way to say this. Uh, we don't want three, you to. We don't want you but, to say anything you can't. Don't get it. It's not that, but it's it's. I I had the opportunity with these three films to to play three different characters that I've never. And Mermaid <clears> for <throat> Christmas is absolutely involved in this as well. Like I've I've got to play characters in these like four films that are all coming out between like next week and then beyond um, that I've never had a chance to play before, you know, like edgy character, a uh, dark character, vampire, um, you know, and then, and then like a Tom Hanks style goofy guy, you know, as well. Mm -hmm. So it's in mermaid for Christmas. So it's, um, it was really, it's been a fun year for me in terms of stretching, you know, my craft 
you know, in, in ways that I haven't been able to do before and, and get outside of my comfort zone. I mean, you know, Michael was very, I'll kiss his ass for a second. I mean, he, <laughs> he was, he was, he, he was, you know, phenomenal in the way that he was able to get, you know, the performance out of me that you'll see in, you know, in this film, you know, there was, when I thought that I was going, you know, too far with something in terms of, you know, you know, the comedy or, or whatever the case may be, he was like, just keep going. You'd go even further. So he was wonderful in, in terms of shepherding this particular performance. Um, so, yeah, I was very, very grateful for that. But, the, you know, this is something, you know, he knows me better than anybody. So he was able to kind of say, look, you do this when nobody's watching. Now just do it when people are watching. And I was like, no, <laughs> that's weird. But he's like, no, people are alone. So, yeah, it, it's, um, yeah, it, it's, uh, it was a really kind of cathartic, experience um doing these these four films that are coming out because i've just never you know people who know know me from days of our lives or bold and beautiful like this is that i'm they've never seen these kind of performances out of me so i'm I'm excited for people to to see different sides of my work well we're definitely excited i mean anytime we can find our our soap actors that we love and adore in any other um, project, you know, we're going to follow. Well, I, I appreciate that. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Now I have three questions for both of you guys and I'm going to let Michael start because, well, he's older. He, he, pretty much. Uh- <laughs> oh, wow. Really? We're going to go down that road. Okay. Let's play. Let's play <laughs> I love it. Okay. So the first question to you, Michael, this is a real okay. thinker. You have to use your brain okay. on this. Okay. Uh-oh. If you What's could, your you're favorite right? ice cream flavor? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All of them. <laughs> there you go. Okay. All right. Now, if you could be a merman for a day, would you want uh-huh. that opportunity or no? Or Could I keep my shirt on? Um, I mean, it's up to you. <laughs> um, well, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I would not want to be a merman for a day. No. Do you know it's weird? You make a mermaid movie and then you go out to sushi with your wife and you feel guilty eating it. It changes you forever. So there you go. No, I pass. There you go. Mm-hmm. Kyle, same oh, question. Hand- Absolutely. I totally. I'm I'm a fish out of water. I mean I'm I'm an, I'm I yeah. Like I'm always at the beach. Um I've you know, been scuba diving, snorkeling, like I would kill to be a a, a merman. <laughs> merman. <laughs> merman. <laughs> merman. <laughs> oh my god. Oh man. Okay. Second question, and Kyle, you'll answer this first, and then Michael, because it's only fair. Younger, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Favorite Christmas movie of all time? Oh come on, um, <laughs> Jesus. Okay, so this is this, this is like the stock cliche preface, but you know there are many. <clears throat> but I I would have to say that I have a soft spot because it's kind of kind of like a, a family tradition in in my household growing up and all the way to this day that we always watch National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation when we all get together. So um, I would have to say that just by by what I just said, just because it's kind of like an every year family tradition for us. But I mean, there's Miracle on 34th Street and, you know, like, uh, yeah, the list goes on. But I would have to say National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Okay. Michael? Uh, it's a, it's a tie. So, uh, I love, it was one of the first movies I ever saw in the movie theater. Um, the Albert Finney version of Scrooge, the musical version, mm-hmm. um, mm-hmm. like made in the seventies or whatever. <clears throat> I grew up with that movie and I freaking love it. I have to watch it every year and I love It's a Wonderful Life. Those are my two favorites. Can't go um, wrong there. No. Exactly. I like those I think, too, is that- yeah. I think that's coming on. Is it coming on this weekend? I think they're starting to play It's a Wonderful Life this weekend. Like, I five, think you know, five times a day. Yeah. Oh, those are going to be on yeah. repeat starting, the, starting this weekend all the way to January. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Well, Pam knows about that. Yeah. She's missed <laughs> Christmas. 
Christmas, <laughs> Christmas right there. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Now, right. Now, Kyle, you just mentioned about family traditions. So I wanted to ask, is there any more family traditions that you have during the holidays besides watching movies? Yeah, you know, my it's you know we're all, my brothers and I are, are all adults now, so we don't spend every Christmas together. But growing up, and then when when rare occasions where we've had Christmases recently together, um, my I have two younger brothers. The middle one, Travis. Um, reads uh night before christmas when we're all kind of sitting around the fire it's kind of, <laughs> i know that sounds so um, cheesy when uh-huh. i just heard myself say that but it, it it's it, yeah it's we did he started doing that god he must have been like he, like when he could first start to read so he must have been like seven or eight and he would always read that right before the three three boys like went to bed and so we continue that all the way up, like through teenage years, and then you know young adulthood, and now when we're when we are together, we still do it just for old time's sake. But yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, Michael? that's an awe. Okay. <laughs> for sure. That's an awe Fan- moment. I'm, I'm just trying to wrap my mind around the fact that you just told the entire audience that your brother didn't learn how to read until he was eight. Oh God. Well, that's, that's highly <laughs> inaccurate then. You know, to give him credit, it's probably around, you know, then we're probably going back to what? When did he learn to read? Five? I don't know. He was young. Five, right? <laughs> he was young. Let's he was put it that way. He was putting the words in sentences. He was speaking his sentences. He, so, he you was know, he ma- couldn't he was, read words. Yeah. yeah he was, ma- he was mean, looking at the pictures and making up, making up his own story. No, he wasn't. He was actually reading. Mm-hmm. Stop causing trouble, Michael. Yeah. <laughs> it's what I'm good at. I'm sorry. Everybody needs a hobby. Yes. <laughs> the god of mischief. Uh-huh. <laughs> Good Real name quick. for the next movie. <laughs> there you go. We're coming up Don't with tempt it. Me. Michael. Oh, oh, we're going to tempt you. Trust me. We are. We need another project. Come on, February. Valentine's Day. Yeah, we're some things out. shooting uh, a mermaid for Easter next week. And, yeah. Uh, <laughs> a mermaid for, for Easter. There you go. <laughs> we got lots of holidays to keep in mind. Uh, well, ho- they can holiday do... traditions. Yeah. You know, when when we were younger, um, Christmas was a, a big deal. You know, we had the big family dinners, and, you know, uh, my grandmother would bake cookies. My grandmother, the Italian side of my family, she would like, Literally just – she was like a one-woman factory cranking these puppies out. I mean just like every kind of Italian Christmas cookie you can imagine. Um, you know, I, I don't really go home for the holidays anymore now that I'm older and I live on the other side of the country. My family's kind of all spread out all over the place. So, you know, Barbie and I, uh, we really love putting up the Christmas tree every year. That's kind of our thing. We don't give each other presents because it just stresses everybody out. So the, the gift is always the tree every year. So um, we really take our time and we enjoy doing that. And, you know, we, we have people over and that kind of thing. So it's, it's kind of become like a, what do they call it? Like an orphan's Christmas situation where you just mm-hmm. have a bunch of people over. And mm-hmm. last year we went to Kathleen Gatti's house uh, for Christmas Eve. And that was a lot of fun. So, you know, oh. we just, we're all over the place. Merry Christmas. Hey, there's there nothing go. wrong with making new traditions. I mean, everybody does it eventually. So, Absolutely. you know, it, when especially when your kids grow up and move away, like you said, or they're doing something else or they're with in-laws or who knows what, you know, you've got to have new traditions. And you can also keep the old traditions in a lot of respects because how many people have more than one Christmas dinner? Very much so. A lot True. of people. Yep. So, well, before we let you go, would you please share with our listeners, both of you, where they can find you on social media, websites, etc. Whatever you got to spill, spill it now. <laughs> go ahead, dude. Oh, well, I'm easy. I'm just on. Uh, I'm just on Twitter, so it's M Caruso Producer. That's it. I'm not. I don't do the Instagram. Not me. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, Michael and I had Michael and I had this conversation. We're going to have to get him on there sooner or later. So, okay, go ahead, Kyle. Sorry. <laughs> I am. I am both on Twitter and Instagram at Kyle Louder twenty two. And side note, I only have one Instagram account. So please stop 
yep. you know, sending me messages saying, do you have a private account? No, those are bad people trying to screw people out of money and gift cards and stuff. So only one at Kyle Louder 22, Instagram and Twitter. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen that quite often on Instagram, it's, especially. It's, it's, it's crazy. It's so gross. I try to let it really act pay or attention no. to those You got to pay attention to those, like the blue verification check mm-hmm. marks. Like that's, if you don't mm-hmm. see one, then, then don't talk to these people, you know, it's awful. Right. I try to let an actor or whoever I'm following on Instagram that has a blue check mark, if I see another account come up that tries to follow me, nope. you know, about it. So that way you guys have a heads up in case you don't see it. Cause you're busy all the time. You might not always catch it. And, uh, oh, uh man, yeah. Seriously. Not, it's terrible. Kyle, not what's, good. The, what's the Instagram handle for the mermaid movie? Yes. Mm, thank you, buddy. And yeah, so we are at mermaid Christmas movie at Instagram yeah. on Instagram at mermaid Christmas movie. And we're going to be, we, you know, that now that, you know, when the film comes out between now and, you know, perpetually, you know, we'll, we'll be getting that account up and running with, you know, behind the scenes footage and screenshots and everything. You know, we, we let it go a little dormant while we were in production for obvious reasons, but now the movie will be out and we'll be uh, very active on that account as well. So um, yeah, head over there as well at mermaid Christmas movie on Instagram. Yeah, and if you don't have Instagram, you can always see the trailer on TakeTwoRadio.com. Um, we have it up there, so be sure to watch that because you are going to laugh your butt off, literally. Yeah. I'm mm-hmm. telling you, I cannot wait for this movie. I mean, there's so many movies coming out, and a lot of them I look forward to, but this is like one of my top movies to see because oh, not you. only is well, it's not only because of you guys and the theme of the movie, but it's also because of all the other actors in there. And, um, you know, we're major soap fans. So, yeah, we're we're on this. And we will definitely be leaving a review for you on Amazon. Thank you. Thank you. Much, thank much you. Thank you so much. We're so and, grateful. And thank you, for, for thank you for today. It's always a pleasure to talk to you. Thank yeah, you. Is, well, thank you for having us back. It's been too long. Yeah, and we will definitely have you back on your next project. So get to work, and uh, sounds, we'll talk yeah. to you then. Awesome. And ha- happy holidays you, to you and your family. An awesome thank you so much for your support. Yes, thank you, yeah, and happy no holidays problem. to you. To you and yours as well. Thanks again. Thank you. Bye, guys. Right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. All righty, then. I had a blast with them, but we knew we would, right, Candace? Exactly. <laughs> there was no doubt about that. <laughs> now I know that when we get off of here, um, Candace is going to go find her some food because she had popcorn, but now she may have some fish. Huh? I really did eat. I, I, I did eat some popcorn. I'm not going to lie. I actually am going to be watching. This is seriously no joke. I'm actually going to watch Ladies of the Lake because it's been a while since I watched season one. And then I'm going to go, you know, prepare myself. But I do think there should be a sequel. Uh, Yeah, I know. That was one thing we should have asked them about. And I totally forgot as we got into the conversation. Well, we're going to wait till next time. We're going to wait till next time. Like when the movie comes out and it's perfect because it's going to be doing for many of us Thanksgiving vacation. So we get to watch it. And if you guys really do like the movie, seriously, leave a comment a review a positive one michael and them will see it and if we can get maybe you know a little campaign started we can get a mermaid for thanksgiving uh labor day um, <laughs> <laughs> you know a mermaid for christmas too so I'm, just, I'm just throwing it out there you know hey look if they have all the if they have all these um baby shark songs and i'm pretty sure everybody knows what i'm talking about they have yeah. Santa shark and all that, we can have a mermaid for. Think about the possibility. You know what? Somebody's about to tweet. Michael, if you're listening, I'm about to tweet you. <laughs> I can see it now. Mermaid for Christmas, the musical. <laughs> okay, the so if they, if they do Baby Shark, we're going to have to have Kyle be the shark. Oh, I would, I would, I would actually. You know what? I'm gonna switch it up a little bit. I mean, we know that Kyle can sing. We, I mean, mm-hmm. obviously, anybody knows, you know, Rock of Ages and all that. 
But I would love, 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 and I know I'm going to get it, is I would like to see the rest of the cast sing Baby Shark. Like, well, actually, Santa Sh- you know what? Santa we Shark, yeah. <laughs> we should have asked the question if they could do, like, during the movie, like when the movie comes out, if they uh-huh. can do, like, live video of, like, the cast, you know, like Kyle, Barbie, Michael, Kathleen and um, everybody who's in the movie, if they're going to watch it all together. And if they do, can somebody do a live video of them saying Santa Shark? <laughs> You're so People, funny. I'm going to make this happen for you. I'm going to do this for you guys. Believe her when she says that. Believe her. She will not stop until me. she gets her way. <laughs> <laughs> you are so funny. Oh my gosh. Well, thank you, Candace, for being my co host no tonight. I, I absolutely no love doing the interview with you. And um, we will see you guys hey again um, now, November 26th, I believe, is our next which Take You Radio the, Soaps and Review show. Which is the same day as the movie release. I know, right? So we could even talk about it. We'll all have to watch the movie before we do the show. And that'll be something to talk about besides our, our regular soap chat. Mm-hmm. You do realize I'm about to tweet and act about this. Like, oh, I do know that. A, I do know. I can see it now. Oh, with, with Michael and Barbie and the fur babies, because they you know, have a lot of pets. And they can, mm-hmm. they can dress them up as little, a little Santa sharks. Yeah, thank you. Also, thank you, Michael and Barbie, for fostering um, pets. I yes. absolutely adore you for that. I thank you for that. I mean, that's so, so huge for you guys to do. And with me being allergic to dogs and cats, unfortunately, I can't do it. So I'm so happy to see that there are people out there that can and do do it. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, okay, and uh, just a little FYI, November 26th happens to be on a Tuesday. We're not doing a Thursday show, obviously, because of Thanksgiving. So uh, gobble, we, gobble. Hope you can, yeah, we hope you can join us, and uh, we'll see you next time. Good night, everybody. Bye, guys. <laughs>